Okay, so here is the motherboard I ordered from Amazon to replace the to replace this motherboard. I was gonna order this exact board, but I really couldn't find one that wasn't extremely too high. Uh, I did find one. It's kind of weird. I guess it's new to me, but it if you read it, it seems it says like it has Amazon refurbished guarantee and stuff like that. So I just assumed it came from Amazon. But then when I went to order thermal paste, it's like you need to add more money for free shipping. It's like okay, well, that's weird because normally if I order an item like this, I can they'll just bundle it together. So I looked in more and it says this is coming from some refurbisher. So then as I I looked at the reviews and I'm like, okay, by the pictures it says it comes with all the hardware for this. But then I re read the reviews and people are complaining that they didn't even get like this screw right here. They didn't get nothing but the motherboard and a plain box, you know, and a static bag, but no hardware for it, no SATA cables. It's like, well, for the savings that isn't worth it because they come with a nice antenna you'll see it comes with the same antenna from here this basic kind of the same and well this is a better board than this one even that this is a b a b550 it, it it has you know has bios flashback on it has all that on it you know so this board to replace refurbish was a hundred so i went ahead and canceled i was like well no because the time i if i went the original you know the original hardware even some of them said they didn't get the back plate obviously it wouldn't count for me because i have one but that's like the stuff you would be missing out of it and if you obviously wanted all the stuff it would cost you more at the in the end run because then you'd buy new antennas you know if you didn't come with this you would have to buy the back plate used off of ebay somewhere and then buy antennas for it too it's like time you're done you almost have that money back anyways and then again I was like well I want to use my old my old fractal design case anyways it's smaller so it needs a smaller motherboard so then I seen this up I think this is new I can't remember um, it wasn't the easiest thing and the other board the other system I had had this this is the exact same board as you just seen if you watched the other video so this is just going to be a video of me kind of testing it make sure the board works i know the cpu works i know the ram works you know the two the two 16 gig sticks of ram i probably won't add thermal paste but at least i'll put this on here for now but you know once i actually build it for a temporary i'm going to use you know my go to cooler hyper 212x normally it's just hyper 212 the like the black edition but this is older one but it it says it supports uh am4 right here you can see am4 so it should work only thing different this x and it says turbo has some weird thing to it it comes with two fans so it's a decent cooler i'm gonna use that temporary instead of that because the because the stock cooler uh, I order another a cheap Dell board but it's out of one of their gaming computers so it has a 24 pin and an eight, and a 4 pin for power so I'm going to use this on that board with the uh, with that AMD Ryzen 5 uh, 1600X I got from that dude that doesn't work because I'm assuming the motherboard doesn't support that CPU and it has 16 gigs of RAM you know, I have everything else for it like I'm gonna use you know I'm gonna use this with that other system it's a 580 and I could put that together and resell that for pretty quick for you know for pretty cheap and then that money there would be you know I'll use that that money from that system to upgrade from this because this is what I'm gonna use for now the video card that I that me and my buddy refixed by changing the die out on here so this fully works six gig video card pretty nice they say it's about 1070 performance but i don't know i haven't really tested it benchmark wise to see what it can do you know i run i've been running 
Um, I can't even remember what I was running on this time when I was testing it. But I did test it a good amount of time for a good, good time. A good time. And this is magnetic. We we're right. You're like complaining that you didn't get the antenna when you have an extra one. So here's the uh, back plate. You can obviously see it's open. So there's that. Don't need that out for right now. Here is the SATA cables. Toss them right there. Here and here is the motherboard. You see what else we have in the box. So we have driver disc, no stickers, nothing. So that's kind of terrible. It's like you're able, you return this and it says that, I never knew what this is for. I have to look and see. It says you have to have everything in the box that was in there to begin with, right? So someone returned this return without the stickers, but they still accepted it. Stickers are nothing, manual, you know, manual's not in here. No big deal, it just sits in a box, doesn't do anything. So, just check out the motherboard itself. Yeah, these could be returned for any reason whatsoever. And it looks like they had the M.2 screws in the wrong spot. Physically, the board looks fine. Everything looks good. I don't see anything out of place. One thing I do notice about these is like, I'm stuck on there, it, is these come out sometimes really easily. It's like you could put your cape, this is a USB 3 for your motherboard, you know, for your motherboard for your front header on your case this plastic comes out pretty easily here's a postcode here's a postcode where the lights will come up your rgb has got two sets of fan headers the main and a backup then here's a fan header here i was thinking there's another fan header somewhere else too oh there is it what the yeah, i remember it having or fan headers okay yeah it does so it has a so this one here's a fan header for like your rear fan and then there's another one down here because my case has two but I have a splitter running the two fans in the front and one in the back runs itself so I will have to take that screw out I don't know if this is the let's see at least the screws in there like it should and if you read the manual on this board, it recommends it, it recommends you to put your NVMe SSD right here. Okay, that's really weird. It even has one way over there. Huh. I'm not for sure why that's in there. I don't know if this size fits over that. It really doesn't. You just grab the little tool thing. So I think I didn't have everything ready for. It's like every time I do a video, I miss one thing. Say that again. I, I thought I had everything ready right here. It's like every time I'm only I, I'm missing something. Like I didn't account for that to be in the wrong place. I'm guessing that is supposed to be the one that's supposed to be under here. Maybe they had a smaller drive for it. Maybe that's why they returned it. So you just check that really fast and see if they remove the one from here because it has it right here and see if the thermal paste is uh, thermal paste this has a uh, thermal pad underneath this to see if that's been used or not what the the screws are on done oh look at this a bonus see this it's a bonus in here it's a bonus item what oh my okay 
so I got a bonus item. I don't know what this drive is, but here is a bonus item in here. Um, this is a uh, what the heck is that? Inland 512 NVMe SSD. You see the 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 oils that this thing had on it. You know, so that's been used. So might have to test that in there too, because it probably has the OS on it. <laughs> well, I don't know what that's worth. I know, I know the ones I normally buy, like. So normally I buy SSDs for pre-built systems that don't have the NVMe spot. I don't have one for the, this is rather SANA, SATA SSD. So it's uh, SP. Yeah, so, and I know the NVMe one because I have it on my watch list. is like 27 before tax off of Amazon or Newegg. Or new egg, so it's like thirty dollars. This one here is probably not that much, like. But so the person who returned this board left this in here, so it's, it's a bonus, like. So I got a bonus drive out of it. So now, now, now I can see, consider the price lower. Okay, so. put this screw back in here okay now now I kind of see where so then I'll put this back on here too well uh, yeah, I'll do that because the thermal paste is the thermal pad is doesn't have the stuff on it anymore doesn't have a little protector on it so I'll put this on here for now and it's stuck <laughs> So yeah, I put this on here now for that thermal pack to stay clean because I don't want to test it. I don't want to test it with that in there. Let's move that over there, put this here. Keep that screw off there too because eventually I'm going to hook uh, mine in. I don't know why this was in there then, but like an extra one. So here's this. I have my power supply sitting over here waiting to go. So the only thing I technically need is a 24 pin. Well, I guess I'll slap these two sticks so ram in here. And the put these ram in here. And lift this up. So and this is the uh, Ryzen 9 3900X. And I know it sh should have no problem working in this board because it worked in, the, I had this board already in that other system. Was, this is the exact same board and it worked in that board. And that board was, the BIOS was fully updated. So this should work in here no matter what. Another thing I want to do is test too is the test to see maybe with luck I can get that Ryzen 5 1600X to work on this board but I, I, I kind of doubt it so like I said I'm going to put this on here just to have it on here No, and yeah, no thermal paste on it right now because I just want to see if it's going to boot. Uh, and it's this top one, I believe, is CP optional. So this one here. So there's that it's hooked up. And now you just go with the 24 pin and the CPU power one is here. These, these all these cables make a little bit tricky pulling them out to get these to run right. So I'm hooking in the 8 pin for the 8 pin, uh, 
eight yeah eight pin for the for the motherboard 24 pin eight pins hooked up grabbing the video card just uh just wiring this antenna antenna the keyboard and mouse is over here so that's on here's a mouse because i will have to hit something to get in the bios Slide this over a little bit more. Go back. Go back. Pins down. Didn't make a clip, but it, it's in. Here's uh, eight pin. Eight pin for the video card, and now a six pin. Now, when I tested it in the other board, all this, you know, the video card worked, the CPU worked, the RAM worked. So, hopefully everything is good. Like, now, power supply is turned off, we're plugging it in. I remember right this part the button is kind of weird on this it's down here yeah right here you see that kind of in the middle of the board normally it's like in this area but I guess because of these it doesn't so that in place and also I'm gonna hook in blocking all my light like putting a hundred percent in the shadow okay, there's that so the power buttons there Hitting the power button for the so it automatically has the LEDs that come on. You can control them with software. So hit the should power on, off, and on a couple times. So because it's going to look do a whole bunch of learning and stuff. So you see what happens. Okay, it's doing the post check. Put this out of the way. Can you see that? You can see the lights. Uh, so it's still doing a post check. Mine was doing that too, that other board. So now it should be booting in. It's on that light there. Probably have this on the wrong source again. Because I was running on... Um, Okay. That's not very good. To just uh, cut this off. Don't tell me I just I got a board, so now I have to go worry about sending this back. We just try this again. It's plugged in, so what the hell, man? Seriously, it's in place. Videos on. Don't even tell me I got. I'm about getting fed up with these bad motherboard situations I keep getting into. You just, you just turn this back on. There we go. So we got an image. And, and, and obviously it, it gives you the warning, please, uh, BIOS. Let's say, as uh, tell me the BIOS speed. Tell me I have the Ryzen 9 3900X 12 core CPU running at 3.8 you know, hertz, 32 gigs of RAM, uh, USB drive total, zero drives, one keyboard, one mouse, one hub. 
please enter setup to recover BIOS settings. VGA card. The VGA card is not supported by. Okay. F1. F1 to continue. So there you go. We're in the BIOS. As you can see, everything kind of works. Everything's showing up. Uh, it's showing the RAM running at 2133 right now, so I have to go in the XMP and do it. What's nice about this is uh, basically my gaming system I have before that I sold, it has 16 gigs of RAM, but and it was running at 3200, but it was CL22, which I, I didn't realize that, that it was CL22 until I looked at it. So this is this is two 16 gig kit, two 16 gigs sticks of RAM, run it's still running at 3200, but it's CL 16. It, so instead of CL 22, it's CL 16, which is better than I thought. So now uh, this will be my gaming setup. I'm thinking, and I'm going to. Either go with the 3060 Ti or a 2070 Supra. Everything seems good right here. So I'm going to cut this. I'm going to shut this down. And I let that fan, fan cut off. So I'm going to shut this down, hit the power button a couple times. And then I'm going to kind of sneak this. NVMe SSD in here and see what it does. Maybe that's the issue why they sent it back. You would think that you would want to put it where the heat sink is, but even in the even in the manual and online, it tells you for the fat to get the full advantage out of it to have it up here on the closer one. So you just power this back on and see if there's an OS on this drive or not. So here we go again. Obviously, I should have showed it. I put the NVMe that was in the board back in it. So, it's doing the little post check thing again. So, it's booting up. I don't know if it has an OS on it. And it has an OS on it. Hopefully, if they put Pro on it. I, you know, like, hopefully they put Pro and didn't put a key on it or nothing. Please wait one moment. So it has an OS locked to the board. It just, what OS is on it and is it activated? So there, there it goes, it says uh, Windows is started. This drive here, I already have Windows 11 Pro installed on this drive and I install it off one of the, off this exact kind of board. So it, it will run in here perfectly fine. Uh, I think the drivers are up to date. Oh, they didn't even like, they didn't even finish like setting it up. Let me see if my mouse will work right here. So you can see, yes. Yes. Skip. Uh, the Wi Fi is picking up. Hit accept username I, I'm just gonna do a s u s I like doing that same name as a motherboard next password nothing uh, I'll turn I check can you even see that on the camera it's pretty far back but yeah I usually uncheck all this this looks like an older version so hit a set not for now and here we go hello hello you say hi I say hello we're getting everything ready for you to get a doc my arm up Dr. Pepper it says this may take several minutes you see how fast this this drive is that's nice though because it means uh, instead of just a two terabyte drive for the AMD um, 1600X system it, it, it's going to have 
a 512 NVMe SSD with it too. And a 2 terabyte drive. 2 terabyte hard drive. Maybe that drive is just slow. Maybe, maybe that drive is slow because it's taking a, a while to get in. Like, man, I'm hoping that this is activated and is pro, not home. Like, almost there. Okay, there we go. We have home, We have Windows. We have Windows 10 on this board. Uh, maybe later I'll say that to that so right click on here go up to system know how good you can see it home dang it man Windows home are you so uh, you know it's no big deal but uh, I don't think it's gonna say activated or not so you just uh, Windows 10 Home activated. Oh, man, that's nuts. It's an OEM key, too. So, this person bought this board, activated Windows 10 Home on it, and then really couldn't do anything with it. Uh, I'm, I'm going to... I'm gonna activate Windows 10 Pro probably on it and then upgrade it to Windows 11. Probably just Windows 11 Pro on it. Windows 11, yeah, Windows 11 Pro just right away. But, uh, just, uh, see something. Like, get my little sand disc so I got my little sand disc 32 uh, 30 32 gig thumb drive so it has a type C and this this board has a type C so I'll run type C on it uh, what I want to pull off of here is set this up on my bed real quick because I wanted to make sure this verified works so if there was an issue I could just take it back and right now what I want to do is this info uh, that's the wrong one <laughs> this mouse does not want to work right here okay this info you see what it says how many hours are on this drive oh my so it says inland NVMe SSD. It has 342 days and five hours use on this NVMe SSD. That's that's crazy. So it says status good 100 uh, percent. It is NVMe, so yes, uh. Jesus, I'm gonna about to get a mouse pad, bro. Really. really. Back. So now here's uh this mark. I'll run to see what this mark says. So obviously still showing this drive in here. Oh that's the that's my so here is the NDME SSD. So you just run this test really quick. So this is a, what did I say, inland 512 NVMe SSD. So you just run the speeds on here and see what it gets. It's, it's probably pretty slow. 
and watch it be one of these oh so that so far isn't bad so uh let's kind of post this down so so far it is reading this right here I'm gonna back up back up show you that's what drives in it <laughs> probably not a smart thing to run it still with no uh no thermal paste on it so, yeah, that's kind of kind of crazy so yeah I need to need to just uh, shut this down it, it shows me it's good I don't want to keep messing around no thermal paste on the CPU I just forgot that since I'm changing the cooler out anyways so I know it works the drive seems to get a pretty good write speed at least at the beginning so I hit the power button I unhook this that's pretty nice it's a bonus maybe this is like twenty dollars or so uh you see like 